His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The movement he started is now known to millions around the world. Yet he himself remained in the background. Without personal ambition, he worked humbly to spread Krishna consciousness, devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yet his achievements and personal character did not go unnoticed. The world's leading scholars and religionists praised his unique contribution, and thousands grew to love him as their dearmost friend and well-wisher. In his memory, his disciples erected a stunning memorial in the hills of West Virginia, now visited by half a million people a year. In this and many other ways around the world, Srila Prabhupada is offered expressions of love by those whose lives he most deeply touched. Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Always remember Krishna, God, and never forget him. This was the goal of the rich spiritual culture that flourished in India for thousands of years. Even today, Lord Krishna is remembered and glorified through monumental achievements in architecture, art, drama, music, dance, and philosophy. Calcutta, 1896, the capital of India, the crown jewel of the British Empire, an elegant city of wide avenues and spacious parks. It is here that a boy Charanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami is born. A pure devotee of Krishna from birth, a boy Charan is raised in a well-to-do mercantile family. From infancy, he goes with his father to the Radha Krishna temple. And at age four, the child spontaneously begins worshipping similar deities in his home. When a boy Charan hears of Ratha Yatra, a traditional festival in honor of Lord Krishna, it further inspires his natural devotion. With his father's help, every year he holds his own small celebration, drawing the neighborhood children into the festivities. At age eight, a boy Charan enters the nearby Mati Lal Seal School. After graduation, he attends Scottish Churches College, one of the most respected in Calcutta. At the time, Mahatma Gandhi is organizing his countrymen in a nationwide boycott of everything British. Gandhiism is surging through India, uniting her in a massive non-cooperation movement. Sensitive to British subjugation of India's culture and people, a boy Charan becomes an early supporter of Gandhi's movement. But 1922 marks a turning point in a boy Charan's life. He meets Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Goswami, the greatest devotee of Krishna of his time. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta belongs to the disciplic succession of spiritual masters, extending back to Lord Krishna himself. He convinces a boy Charan that Krishna's spiritual message transcends India's dependent position. Nothing is more important. He requests a boy Charan to spread Krishna consciousness in the Western world. A boy Charan hears and is deeply impressed. By this time, a boy Charan has a growing family. He moves to Allahabad and starts a successful pharmacy. All the while, his spiritual master's words remain implanted in his heart. In 1933, he becomes a disciple of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta, who comments, he will do everything in due time. Three years later, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta leaves this world after again requesting a boy Charan to preach in English. A boy Charan takes his words to heart and starts writing prodigiously. In 1944, he single-handedly begins publishing and distributing Back to Godhead, a fortnightly. The first issue addresses the crisis of war. The Second World War within 20 years is scourging the earth. Back to Godhead points out that people throughout the world want an end to war. But so often they want God's kingdom without God. 
and they cannot have it. All our plans will be doomed to failure by our own selfishness unless we turn to God. After the war, a boy Charon moves to Jhansi and founds the League of Devotees. He prepares a charter for an international organization, its members dedicated to a peaceful, God-centered life. Acharya Prabhakar, his first disciple, remembers.